Okay folks, here's our uh, blue tarp on the back of my truck. Kind of toasty out here this morning. I got about 10 below zero. Um, anyway, under this blue tarp is uh, my new tool. Pretty excited about it. This is a 1963, or about, I haven't done the serial number on it yet, but I have paperwork from the original owner. Um, uh, 111 W 155 walking foot sewing machine singer sewing machine uh, it's pretty cool uh, I'm gonna get her on tarped and uh, get it set up straightened up get it in the house let it warm up a little bit because it is cold out here but I'm like a kid on Christmas morning okay here it is guys off the truck <clears throat> this is the table I just took the head in the house, but I thought there'd be a little bit better light out here so people could see what it looks like. Uh, that's the original clutch motor. Uh, we tried it before we brought it home and everything seemed to work fine with it. So uh, bobbin winder up on the top, lights kind of hanging right now. I do have the uh, thread. Um, spool uh, carrier I'm not really sure what the technical name is for it but uh, it's uh, I'll uh, I'll get it all put back together and um, so people can see what it looks like when it's all together Okay guys, this is uh, my Singer 111-155 walking foot upholstery sewing machine. It's uh, I got it upstairs here. Like I said, she's heavy. Weighs about 220 pounds complete with the table. As you can see, it's a, uh, a Singer table. Um, has a knee lift underneath to pick up the uh, foot. Uh, I've been working on it. I just oiled it up a little bit. And it's working pretty smooth. So, uh, I mean, real smooth. So, um, I think I'm going to try doing a little sewing here for you and show you how it works. And um, it is an industrial machine. So, uh, as you can see by the base on it, it has uh, had a few pieces of uh, material dragged across it. The year is kind of tricky to figure out because... Uh, it actually, I don't know if we'll be able to focus in on the, the tag down at the bottom there. That's the serial number. It has a PB in front of it, uh, like peanut butter. Um, and that's actually a sign that it was uh, cast in Germany, uh, which is pretty cool. So um, this uh, normally these were made in, uh, in um, Pittsburgh. No, oh. Cincinnati. Oh, let me think. It'll come to me. Bridgeport. There it is. Bridgeport, Connecticut. Um, so this one here was probably towards the production line for Singer, we were thinking. Um, and it's possibility that this was made out of parts. So uh, this could be a German casting with um, that was probably more than likely assembled uh, in Bridgeport. So um, it has the oiler on the top. A lot of people haven't seen that before. Your thread comes down, you can see here, it actually feeds off the top, up through this loop, then comes down into the oiler, okay, or the waxer, sometimes they call there's a piece of felt in here, and that would gain um, some uh, lubricant on your thread, and then goes down into your tensioner, uh, from your tensioner down to your needle, um, so it has a... Uh, drop in bobbin as you can see um, so I think we'll give you guys a little show on how it runs here in a minute what I have here is um, some uh, just uh, uh, vinyl uh, I, put, I picked this up at uh, Joanne Fabrics many years ago 
Um, I've done a couple seats, kind of the gift wrap style, wrapping it up and uh, putting it on the, a seat. Um, it worked good, um, but now that I have uh, this guy, um, hopefully we'll be able to uh, do something a little fancier. Um, still learning, so uh, bear with me as I run this. Um, this machine here has a, a power, it has a clutch motor, so see now the light works. How's that look in the picture? Oh, that looks okay. I guess the machine's got to be on for the light to work. I also learned that, hopefully you can hear everything over the motor running, um, that you need to hold both of your threads, your bobbin thread and your uh, needle thread. Um, so, and you should start one on the top and one on the bottom if you can, that's even better. Um, what I will do is, uh, actually I'll double this up and run, uh, run it through two layers of vinyl, which is no problem for this machine. This machine uh, walks through this like nothing. I'll put the foot down. The only problem with this machine is that it does not have reverse. So there's a couple ways to lock your stitch. One of them requires a lot of finesse and the other one is just kind of slow, but we'll do the slow method first to show you how to lock your stitch. What you do is hold your threads, put just a little bit of tension on them. That's what I'm doing here and we'll put in a couple stitches. Actually, you see how fast that goes. With your needle down, make sure your needle's down. Okay, we'll turn it around, we'll lift up the foot, we'll spin it around. Actually, I missed my stitch a little bit, but that's okay. We'll come back, and I'll try to slow it down here with this clutch, okay? needles down, spin it around again. Now we can sew. We've locked it in. It's not going anywhere. Um, and I will try to go slow, which is extremely difficult. You do not have to hold your threads anymore because we've already locked the stitch down. So let's give it a see if I can go slow today. The trick is the foot. Okay. You can see I've got my stitch opened up pretty much as, as big as it will go. Uh, this machine will do, uh, I think, five, five stitches per inch. So if you look at that, you probably got one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I'd say that's about five stitches per inch. Okay. Um, it does a real nice job. I don't know if you can see the back, but by putting tension on it, you're not getting a little bird's nest. I went one... I went five stitches before I even stopped, so it, it will get away from you. This machine, it, it flies. Uh, a lot of guys change the clutch motors out and put servo motors on them, uh, which work great uh, for slowing the machine down. You can put a gear reducer on it, which I might do. I'm not sure yet. So, um, but, um, but yeah, this is, uh, this is the machine. It's, uh, I, I love it. It's... Uh, it's awesome, you know, actually it's, you know, I spin it around, needle was in, so we'll go that way with it, and spin it around again, go this way, and come back with it. Now I'm going to try to go slow. That's not slow. <laughs> it's got a mind of its own sometimes here. I'm going to bury the needle. That means I don't lose my stitch where I am. We'll come across here. I am going to try to go slow. Come on, baby. Go slow. I oiled it up. I think it's faster than it was before, <laughs> which is pretty sad. Now uh, I'll bring the needle down. Uh, I'm off my material, I believe, so I made a big mess. But you guys get the idea. Okay, get this up out of here. Ah, there we go. There it goes. It is challenge sometimes to get that to break free. 
leave a little tails out there so you can start again. So I've been practicing with this for, I have probably got about 20 minutes. <laughs> so, uh, so this is what I made in this is how terrible I am at this. Um, I just got to get better at going slower. And um, But just for fun here, I'm going to show you guys some crazy stuff. This is uh, four layers of vinyl. This is eight layers of vinyl. Okay. I'm going to drop the foot. Find my threads. Okay. Eight layers of vinyl. I don't know if you can see it. But, <laughs> 100 miles an hour, no problem. It punches through it. Like they said, don't try doing that with your uh, mom's machine because it's not going to do it. So, so um, this is what I've been working on. This is my uh, new thing. I'm going to try to learn and uh, become a little more proficient at it. Um, We'll see how it goes, and uh, maybe you guys will see some nice, nice quality work. Um, I'll, uh, I'll get back to you guys. Hopefully, it's, uh, it looks better than it did today. So, thanks for watching.